As we have been talking about enzymes, we have seen that enzymes are active at all times. If they are exposed to substrate, they will convert to product. But there are situations where we do not want the enzyme to be active. For example, sitting in biochemistry class listening to a lecture, one does not want their blood to clot. On the other hand, if we are out on the soccer field and suffer an injury, we do want clotting to occur very quickly so we don't bleed to death and can get back into the game. Mother Nature has found several ways to regulate enzyme activity as listed here. We will leave repression as a mechanism until the molecular biology section of the course. Proenzymes, which are also called zymogens, are enzymes that are made in a longer inactive form that is cut when the enzyme is needed. Clotting factors that I alluded to in my example is one of the three classes of proteins that are made as proenzymes. Peptide hormones and digestive enzymes are the other two very commonly encountered examples. The cutting which takes place is not random, but very selective. Most commonly, this clipping takes place at a what is referred to as a dibasic site. This slide shows the example of proinsulin, which is a peptide hormone involved in digestion, and I am showing the basic residues, lysine and arginine, arginine and arginine in magenta. In the case of insulin, the central part of the peptide is cleaved out, and this is called the C-peptide, which is used as a marker to determine whether someone produces insulin. In this figure, I am showing as ovals the active part of the protein, and the circles the basic amino acids. As fig this figure shows, there are examples where the amino terminus is the active portion, the carboxy terminus is the active portion, the center, central part is the active form, and then the insulin that we began with where it's the amino and both the amino and car carboxy termini are the active portion of the enzyme. A second major way that enzyme activity is controlled is by the use of isoenzymes. I will return to lactate dehydrogenase as my standby example. There are two slightly different forms of lactate dehydrogenase referred to as muscle isozyme and heart isozyme. Lactate dehydrogenase functions as a tetramer. And at the bottom of this slide, I list the possible forms of the enzyme. To the right of this slide, I show that there is a preference for one or the other equilibrium direction. Probably all of us have experienced the weight gain associated with Thanksgiving and Christmas season and the desire in the spring to get your weight back down. When I was younger, I would go out for a long run on the first warm day of spring and the next day I would be struggling to walk. My legs would be sore due to the accumulation of lactic acid. If one considers that the heart is also receiving a hard workout during that long run after a period of inactivity, then one would recognize that the buildup of lactic acid activity in the heart 
leading to damaged mus muscle tissue would be synonymous with a heart attack. Why the, why the preference? If we can run away from danger, we can set around and let our legs heal, but, if we, but we need the heart to be able to carry us away from the danger. The third mechanism to control enzyme activity is, to, is covalent modification. Phosphorylation is the most common means of covalent modifications, as we will see again and again in the metabolism section. There are, however, other modifications, including acetylation and methylation, which you may have heard about in introductory biology classes as ways of controlling gene expression, among others. To give an example of phosphorylation, I will use glycogen synthase, glycogen phosphorylase, which breaks down glycogen, and glycogen synthase, which converts glucose molecules to glycogen. These two diametrically opposed processes should not be carried out at the same time. Therefore, phosphorylation simultaneously causes an inactivation of glycogen synthase and an activation of glycogen phosphorylase, phosphorylase and vice versa. Allosterism means other shape or other site. This is a little bit like non-competitive inhibition referred to earlier. But unlike non-competitive inhibition, it is possible to see an allosteric stimulation. Allosterism is particularly commonly encountered in pathways, so we will deal with it extensively later in the course. Other terminology which is used is homotropic versus heterotropic. This makes reference to whether it is the substrate itself or another molecule that is causing the allosteric effect. I will plant this in your mind for recollection later that most commonly we encounter feedback inhibition and feed forward stimulation. Finally, it should be pointed out that allosteric kinetics are different from the hyperbolic connect kinetics we encountered early in this discussion. This graph, which is figure 8.36 of your book, shows that in the presence of CTP, cytidine triphosphate, the kinetics are very much sigmoidal, whereas in the presence of ATP, the kinetics shift to look more, more um, hyperbolic. And so this would be an example of a allosteric inhibition being negated in the presence of ATP.